What's up everyone and welcome to another video. Before we start this video, if you like unboxing, reviews and tech news, smashing that subscribe button would be highly appreciated. And watch this video till the end to know the difference between 5G and 4G. Mobile networking of the fifth generation is gradually moving forward by the day. The new cellular network aims to offer high rates, broader coverage and eventually stop traffic and latency issues. There is no doubt that 5G is going to revolutionize the way we use our mobile. But upgrading 4G handset really worth? Let's take a deeper look at 5G versus 4G. Starting with the speed. We have seen that how fast 5G is before, but we can't predict the particular speed. Rather, think of a 5G as delivering a range of speed and the actual speed you receive would depend on which network you are connected to, how busy it is, what device you are using and some couple of other considerations. This table gives you a fair idea of each generation of cell network technologies, maximum speeds and the real world average speeds. The topic is complicated by the number of various technologies used in each generation, regional differences in coverage and the reality that technology tends to grow and change over time. For starters, with the introduction of LTE long -term evolution, and then LTE-A long-term evolution advanced, 4G has greatly changed throughout its lifetime. For the new improvements of 4G LTE-A, you will potentially get access to 1 Gbps, which is the lower end of what 5G aims to offer. In the real world, the average speeds you get will probably be much smaller. 1 Gbps gigabits per second is 1000 Mbps megabits per second. And bringing the speed into some sort of detail, confusingly, megabits are distinct from megabytes. A megabyte includes 8 megabits. Therefore, 1 Gbps converts into 125 MB per second. An MP3 file could be 5 MB, while a TV episode could be 350 MB. If you are currently wired to 1 Gbps, you can theoretically stream a standard Blu-ray complete HD video in 2 minutes. Although 4G is still evolving, what you get is usually about 10 Mbps and 50 Mbps anywhere. If we look at Netflix streaming speed suggestions, it suggests 25 Mbps for Ultra HD content. For HD, you only need 5 Mbps. Reaching 50 Mbps as an average minimum is the target of 5G. Getting higher speeds is always great, but that's not exactly the main benefit of 5G as 4G speeds are pretty decent now. What 4G is not good with this latency? Latency is the amount of time it takes to upload data from your computer to reach the goal. This measures the time it takes for the data to transfer in millisecond from source to destination. It's very important for applications such as gaming where response time may affect the results. If data is being sent to the cloud, it may also prove crucial for self-driving vehicles. So quick decisions will trigger a brake reaction or escape an obstacle in real time. For 4G networks, you are looking at about 50 ms of average latency with the 5G technology this could go down to 1 ms. Just to add any meaning to this, it requires at least 10 milliseconds for the brain to interpret the picture viewed by the human eye. Low latency is important for real-time computer or vehicle reactions, which may even make cloud gaming feasible. Gamers may play on remote hardware through their mobile as services such as Google's Stadia. 1 millisecond is what you can aspire to, as it is what is possible in near-perfect scenarios. With 5G, you can assume that latency to typically be about 10 milliseconds. Improvements in latency may prove to be the true driver of 5G adoption, but several challenges still come in the future. This took years for 4G networks to expand around the world, and many rural areas still rely on 3G networks. But where 4G coverage exists, the speeds vary pretty widely. We might anticipate 5G networks to take some time to cover all, and the implementation may adopt a similar trend as 4G with the cities to gain first. Verizon uses millimeter wave (MM wave) technology, which needs a bunch of 5G nodes to be implemented because the signals are very short and easily blocked by the walls. Although AT&T also aims to use MM wave technology. It is expected that T-Mobile and Sprint may continue with the low-band spectrum. It has a wider range and isn't hindered too quickly. Because of the fundamental technology, there is a lot of work to be completed logistically in developing 5G networks and it will potentially take years.
We don't only need providers to put network infrastructure in order for us to take advantage of 5G. We do need to purchase smartphones including the Samsung Galaxy S10 5G that will support 5G. You would not be able to access 5G rates on your current handset. It's also worth mentioning that 5G is expected to be even more power consuming. So the battery life, which is still an issue for many, may be going to get worse. Many of us still rely on 3G when there is no 4G available and that is exactly what is going to happen with 5G. This is incorrect to assume that 5G is a direct replacement for 4G. In reality, it is a complementary technology. With the two working in together, wherever we are, we should be able to get decent speeds. It is also important to note that providers are still improving 4G networks and that both download speeds and latency can be further enhanced. Unfortunately, at and has agreed to mark the latest 4G progresses as 5GE, 5G evolution. Many carriers have done just the same with HSPA+, an upgraded 3G technology which they have branded as 4G. True 5G networks will start to expand this year, starting in major cities and a number of phones will be available to take advantage of. But most of us are still at least a year or two away from being able to use 5G. Meanwhile, 4G will keep serving as well. That's all for now. Thanks a lot for watching guys. My name is Hamza. This is Techfielder and I'll catch you in the next one.